In the 4th century, Constantine, a Roman emperor, wanted to honor the site where Jesus was allegedly laid to rest after the crucifixion, so he built a little shrine around it. In 2016, a group of archaeologists got access to the tomb and decided to open it up. When they opened it, what they saw inside surprised everyone. So stay with me and let's find out what they saw together. It's common knowledge that Jesus Christ was crucified by the Roman Empire. It is also known that he rose on the third day after the crucifixion. Before he rose, he was buried, but there was nothing to indicate the exact spot. Around 325 AD, Constantine, who was the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity, sent out representatives to Jerusalem. He told them to locate the spot where Jesus had been buried. On their arrival at Jerusalem, they were directed to a 2000-year-old Roman temple built by Hadrian. They went in to investigate if indeed it was the location of Jesus' tomb. According to the Bible, Jesus' tomb was cut out of rock, so when Constantine's men found a tomb cut out of rock in the temple, they concluded it was Jesus' tomb and went back to Constantine to report their findings. On getting the information, Constantine ordered his men to create a little building around Jesus' tomb. This tomb is famously known as Edicule, which is a Latin word that means little house. The Roman temple that housed the tomb was then converted into a church. Since then, the church has been widely known as the burial site of Jesus. Despite no clear evidence pointing at the Church of Holy Sepulchre as the site of his grave, it indeed serves its purpose as over 5,000 Christians troop into the church each day to see where Jesus Christ was put to rest. People even go through the Via Dolorosa, the pathway where he was forced to bear the cross just to have an insight into what he felt. Over the centuries, the original edicule has been through several modifications. In the 7th century, the church was sacked when the Persians conquered Jerusalem. It was rebuilt, then again demolished in the 11th century. The church was rebuilt in the 12th century and burned to the ground in the 19th century. It was again restored and that is what is standing to date. A marble seal was placed around the tomb itself around 1555 to prevent visitors from taking a piece. Some historians believe that the edicule itself got completely destroyed in the 11th century and had to be completely reconstructed. Some believers don't regard the edicule at all because they believe Jesus' resting place is actually somewhere else. Instead, they believe it's a tomb located in the old city, Talpid Tomb. While those who believe his resting place is the edicule acknowledge another cave known as the Garden Tomb as the location where he was crucified. Although absolute proof of the location of the Jesus' tomb remains beyond our reach, the archaeological and early literary evidence argues strongly for those who associate it with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, stated archaeologist John McRae. The edicule that is currently standing is said to have been built around 1810 during the Ottoman Empire. Having gotten no proper renovation or reconstruction, the building began to crumble, but in 2016, a renovation was carried out. The reason the edicule didn't get renovated before 2016 was because three religions shared custody of the church, the Greek Orthodox, the Armenian Orthodox, and the Roman Catholic. Until 2016, they did not unanimously agree to the renovation. In 2016, all three churches were able to reach an agreement concerning the reconstruction. They had been forced to reach an agreement by the Israeli authorities, who related how unsafe the building had become. They also convinced them by pointing out how important renovation was and how it could help to preserve the precious artifact. The renovation was allotted to the National Technical University of Athens. The university was known for its prowess in renovating ancient buildings. They had restored the Acropolis in Athens and the Hagia Sophia Mosque turned museum in Istanbul. National Geographic also teamed up with the university to work on the cultural restoration of the project. The project was documented and aired on the channel. This renovation was led by Antonio Maropulu from the National Technical University and was rigorous work because they had to be careful to keep the building in its original state. 
the expert removed the iron cage that was built in 1947 by the British to shore up the edicule, then began to take the building apart. Then they removed disintegrated mortar and reconstructed parts of the swollen masonry. The columns were reset, and to prevent the cracks in the structure from spreading, they injected it with grout. Rainwater had done so much damage to the mortar over the centuries and the iron bars, which were replaced by titanium, had fully corroded. As they got to the tomb, they noticed that the top was split, and in order to preserve it, they decided to leave it unopened. But after several contemplations, they all agreed to open it and fix the damages to prevent something from leaking inside. Due to the split on the top of the tomb, they had to be extremely careful. The main goal was not to break the plate, said Harris Muzakis, an assistant professor of civil engineering at National Technical University who worked on the project. The team was under severe pressure as they removed the top. We had to be very careful. It was not just the tomb we had to open. It was the tomb of Jesus Christ that is a symbol for all of Christianity. And not only for them, but for other religions too, said Harris Muzakis. Once they removed the marble top, they dug deeper and found something that took them all by surprise. Just below the marble top that they had all known about, the one placed by Constantine in 1555 was another marble slab. It was a slab that bore the cross sign of Jesus Christ. It was believed to have been carved from the wall of a cave where Jesus Christ had laid after his death. The archaeologists and historians were surprised because none of them knew that the tomb had more than one slab. In fact, there is no document in history that states Jesus' tomb had two slabs or that it had a cross carved on it. It was white in color, which showed that it was older than the first one they had seen. The remains of the slab also had traces of the original mortar that had been used to put it in place. It was white in color which showed that it was older than the first one they had seen. The remains of the slab also had traces of the original mortar that had been used to put it in place. The archaeologists and historians presume that the slab had not been seen since the 1500s. Some said that the cross had been put there during the time of the Crusaders, while others said that the crack on the slab might have been due to the attack of the Arab conquerors long before the Crusaders. Not able to make any conclusions due to the lack of tangible evidence, they collected dirt and mortar for further testing. The test carried out was done using optically stimulated luminescence. It determined when the sediments had been last exposed to light. The tests showed that the mortar had been set around the year 335 and that date correlates with the story of the Roman era construction. Obviously, that date is spot on for whatever Constantine did, and that's truly remarkable, one of the archaeologists, Martin Biddle, said. Other samples collected from the site also showed different phases in the evolution of the edicule, which includes the reconstruction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre after 1009 and the major reconstruction in the 16th century. It is interesting how mortars not only provide evidence of the earliest shrine on the site, but also confirm the historical construction sequence of the edicule, the reconstruction project leader Antonio Maropulu said. Since Jesus was presumed to have been buried over 2,000 years ago, it shows that the slab had not seen light for over 1,673 years. Everyone involved in the project was amazed. I was overwhelmed by the sense of seeing something so sacred to Christians around the world. And to think, wow, I'm one of about 50 people who are going to see this, and then they'll close it up again," said Dr. Frederick Hebert. Many of those who worked on the project claim to have felt some kind of connection with it. Professor Maropulu said, The message of the resurrection unites all of humanity. People of all religions and all ethnicities all kneel at the tomb of Christ. I am proud to have been involved in helping to preserve one of the most important monuments in history. This renovation was long overdue and I am glad the churches gave us the chance to do what needed to be done. The number of experts that worked on the project was related to being over 50, and the work was done so meticulously that they hoped it would last for over 500 years. So tell me, 
How would you feel if you had a chance to see the tomb Jesus laid before he resurrected? Tell me in the comments. See you next time.